The movie begins with Adrian, a young conductor of an orchestra, watching a recorded video of his girlfriend, Belen, informing him that she is ending their relationship. Belen pleads with him not to search for her or hold any resentment, explaining that she can no longer be with him despite still loving him. Amid the gloomy weather, Adrian seeks solace in a bar to drown his sorrows. While drowning his sorrows, Adrian encounters Fabiana, one of the waitresses. Several hours later, the bar closes and Adrian, heavily intoxicated, accidentally bumps into a man, resulting in a physical altercation. The man's wife intervenes promptly and escorts her husband away, leaving Adrian on the bar's doorstep, inebriated and bruised. Upon seeing Adrian's condition, Fabiana emerges from the bar and takes the initiative to drive Adrian home in his car. The next morning, Adrian awakens at Fabiana's place, realizing that he was too drunk to provide her with his address. Consequently, Fabiana brings him to her home instead. Fabiana's romantic interest in Adrian is evident, but he departs as soon as he regains his senses, not allowing her any chance for a romantic encounter. Later that night, Adrian returns to the bar to apologize to Fabiana for his earlier behavior and expresses gratitude for her assistance. Following their conversation, Adrian invites Fabiana to his uncle's orchestra. In a joyous and relaxed manner, Adrian discusses his work, and he attempts to kiss Fabiana. However, she halts him, expressing concern about his relationship status. Adrian assures her that he is neither in a relationship nor married. Upon hearing this, Fabiana, filled with desire, allows him to passionately kiss her. They continue their intimate encounter at Adrian's place, where a full-length mirror is situated in front of the bed. The two indulge in flirtatious behavior before proceeding to the next stage of their encounter. The next morning, Fabiana wakes up before Adrian and heads to the bathroom. While there, she hears peculiar sounds emanating from beneath the sink. Dismissing it, Fabiana explores the surroundings and discovers what appears to be a workplace near the window. However, before she can investigate further, Adrian joins her and leads her to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. They enjoy their meal outdoors, finding shade under a tree and admiring the scenic view. During the night, two police investigators assigned to Bellin's mysterious disappearance arrive at Adrian's place, coincidentally, while Fabiana is present. One of the investigators, a bald officer, informs Adrian that the immigration authorities have confirmed that Bellin has not left the country. The investigators proceed to search the house while questioning Adrian. Adrian explains that he and Bellin had rented the house for two months, and when she vanished, she only left behind her workshop and a few belongings. As the police conduct their investigation, Adrian confides in Fabiana, revealing that Bellin left him for another man and that he has exhausted all efforts to contact her without success. Later that night, while Fabiana indulges in a relaxing bath, Adrian decides to play the piano downstairs. As Fabiana reclines in the bathtub, she senses and observes the water waves moving towards her, as if something within the walls is causing this unusual phenomenon. Alarmed by a sudden lightning strike that causes a power outage, Fabiana swiftly exits the tub. Adrian rushes upstairs to calm her, and moments later, the power is restored. The previously eerie atmosphere gives way to desire, and they engage in passionate kissing. However, Fabiana interrupts their intimacy and asks Adrian to remove the prying dog from the room. The following night, one of the investigators visits the bar where Fabiana works and warns her to stay away from Adrian, revealing that he is a suspect in Bellin's disappearance. Despite this warning, Fabiana watches Adrian with a smile as he performs with the orchestra. The next day, while enjoying a warm shower, Fabiana is unexpectedly scalded by overly hot water. She quickly turns off the faucet and inspects her shoulder in the mirror. The recurring noise beneath the bathroom sink startles her, but her attention is diverted by the presence of the curious dog. Later in the day, while Adrian is at work, Fabiana playfully jumps on the bed and notices something on the floor. She discovers a small sewer-like space next to the bedside table, along with a key necklace underneath it. Fabiana picks up the necklace and places it around her neck, admiring it in front of the full-length mirror. Suddenly, the room plunges into darkness once again as thunder strikes, and Fabiana hears a noise emanating from downstairs. Despite her fear, she musters the courage to investigate. As another thunderclap reverberates, Fabiana catches sight of a fleeting shadow outside the window, accompanied by the immediate barking of the dog. Frightened, she accidentally knocks over a chair, causing her to stumble and hit her head on the piano. After regaining consciousness, Fabiana finds herself with Adrian in the house, 
and the power has been restored. Adrian provides her with pain medication as Fabiana expresses her concerns. She shares her belief that there is a ghost present and insists that Adrian listen to the strange sound coming from beneath the sink. Adrian suggests that it might be the wind passing through the plumbing, but Fabiana disagrees. The following day, the investigators contact Adrian and request his presence to identify a body they have found, potentially belonging to Bellin. Following their instructions, Adrian goes to the district attorney's office, only to discover that the body is not Bellin's. Upon returning home, he overhears Fabiana speaking in the bedroom bathroom. Curious, Adrian asks whom she is talking to, and Fabiana responds that she is merely searching for a book. She then inquired about his meeting with the district attorney's office. Adrian shares the details of what transpired and assures Fabiana that Bellin is no longer a part of his life. As Fabiana gazes intently into the bathroom mirror while embracing Adrian, a revelation occurs. Bellin is indeed alive, but trapped in a secret room, concealed behind the two-way mirror, observing them in a state of desperation. Flashbacks offer glimpses into the events leading up to Bellin's entrapment in that room. In the past, Adrian informs Bellin that he has been selected to perform with the Bogota Philharmonic. Planning to stay there for a year, he asks Bellin to accompany him. Despite the challenges, Bellin agrees, and they embark on building their lives together in Colombia. However, Adrian gradually grows closer to someone else. On one occasion, Bellin catches Adrian engaged in conversation with Veronica, one of the violinists. Although they exchange pleasantries, the tension between them is undeniable. They soon begin searching for a place to live and have the fortune of encountering a widowed woman named Landlord. Landlord showcases the elegant yet modest interior of her house to Bellin, and a friendship forms between them as they both left their homeland for the men they love. Since Landlord has been residing in the city, she decides to rent out the house on the condition that Bellin and Adrian take care of her dog, which has a peeping habit. This requirement poses no difficulty for Bellin, as she adores dogs, and the couple happily moves into their new home. One fateful day, Bellin decides to surprise Adrian at his office. However, their joyful expressions turn into disappointment when Adrian's uncle opens the door, revealing Veronica's presence inside, ruining the surprise. Despite Adrian's reassurances that they were simply engaged in conversation, Bellin becomes increasingly suspicious of his relationship with Veronica. This isn't the first time she has caught them together. Jealousy and doubt begin to erode their once strong bond, leading to a lack of trust. Bellin confronts Adrian about his text messages and calls with Veronica, and to her dismay, Adrian admits to flirting with her. Although he claims nothing physical occurred between them out of consideration for Bellin's feelings, this explanation fails to satisfy her. While Adrian is at work, Bellin confides in Landlord, sharing her grievances about Adrian's affair. Contemplating how Adrian would react if something happened to her, Bellin expresses her desire to test him. Landlord suggests a plan to teach Adrian a lesson by unveiling a hidden room accessible through a keyhole unlocked by a key necklace. The main bedroom's bookshelf is moved, revealing a secret room hidden behind a two-way mirror. Landlord explains that her husband, a former Nazi officer, built the room for his safety. The reinforced glass allows peeping without detection, and the room is completely soundproof with a hermetically locked glass door. Bellin learns that there is a generator for the lights, a toilet, a sink, and a bed for her comfort. After Landlord's departure, Bellin prepares to execute her plan. Recording a farewell message for Adrian, Bellin expresses her decision to end their relationship despite her enduring love for him. Hastily packing her belongings, she places them in the hidden room. Upon hearing the dog's bark, indicating Adrian's return, Bellin leaves a post-it note on the camera. As she hears Adrian approaching, she grabs her bag and rushes to the hidden room, unintentionally dropping the key necklace into a sewer-like space. Standing by the door, Bellin observes Adrian's growing panic as he watches her video. He searches the cabinet and bathroom, hoping to find her belongings. However, all he discovers are her toiletries. In desperation, Adrian tries to contact Bellin. Meanwhile, Bellin feels a mixture of joy and sadness, convinced that Adrian truly cares for her and their relationship. Unable to bear seeing him suffer, she attempts to retrieve the key necklace from her bag, only to realize her mistake. Bellin pounds on the door, screaming in the hopes that Adrian will hear her, but her efforts are in vain. Adrian remains oblivious to her presence, as there is no sound transmission from the hidden room. With no signal and a sealed door, Bellin's pleas go unanswered. Adrian, 
accompanied by his uncle, brings the camera to the police, seeking their assistance in finding Bellin. The bald investigator inquires about the last time Bellin was seen, and Adrian's uncle recounts the events at Adrian's office before her disappearance. Days pass, and Bellin resorts to desperate measures. She begins to dig a hole in the wall using any sharp object she can find and scours for food, resorting to expired canned goods to sustain herself. Each day, pain and guilt consume her as she witnesses Adrian drowning his sorrows in alcohol due to the anguish she caused. Then, one night, Bellin kicks the tubes on the ground, hoping for a response from Adrian. Although he remains unaware of her presence, she manages to create movement in the sink water. Repeatedly banging a pipe against the tubes, she generates small water ripples. Dishearteningly, Adrian fails to notice the signs. Just as hope begins to flicker within her, the situation takes. The intense and suspenseful story reaches its climax as the truth unfolds. Bellin, trapped in the hidden room, watches and listens helplessly as Adrian and Fabiana engage in a romantic encounter. The following morning, Fabiana experiences the strange sound from the sink and hears Bellin's voice insulting her. Bellin desperately tries to call for help, but her efforts prove futile. Using her abilities to manipulate the water, Bellin causes disturbances in the bathtub and adjusts the shower water temperature, affecting Fabiana's experience in the bathroom. Bellin, nearing the end of her food supply and hope, sees a glimmer of opportunity when Fabiana discovers the key necklace. She screams in the hope that Fabiana will hear her, but once again, her attempts fail. Desperate for communication, Bellin creates water ripples, capturing Fabiana's attention. Fabiana asks questions, and Bellin responds through the tides. Overjoyed, Bellin continues banging on the tubes as Fabiana realizes she can free herself by using the key necklace. However, Fabiana decides not to turn the key, recognizing that Bellin's return would jeopardize her relationship with Adrian. Fabiana apologizes to Bellin, concealing her discovery from Adrian when he enters the bathroom. Adrian remains oblivious to the truth, and Fabiana moves their belongings to another bedroom, erasing any trace of Bellin. Meanwhile, Adrian meets with the investigator, who warns him not to harm Fabiana. Later that night, Fabiana attempts to communicate with Bellin once again, but notices no response. She begins to suspect that something may have happened to Bellin. The following day, while Adrian is at work, the investigator visits Fabiana and hands her an envelope containing photos of Adrian and Veronica. The investigator hopes this evidence will prompt Fabiana to leave Adrian. As Adrian realizes his mistake and ends his affair with Veronica, Fabiana, burdened by Adrian's infidelity, opens the secret room to confront the truth. She finds the room in disarray and a seemingly lifeless Bellin lying on the bed. However, Bellin unexpectedly awakens and attacks Fabiana, causing her to lose consciousness. Bellin seizes the opportunity to take the key from Fabiana and make her escape. Finally free, Bellin notices the physical changes she has undergone during her captivity. She also receives a voice message from the attorney of the deceased landlord, informing her that the house will be sold. Hours later, Adrian returns home and discovers the key necklace in the master bedroom, along with a picture of him and Bellin posted in the mirror. The movie concludes with Bellin sitting alone on the beach, while Fabiana remains trapped in the secret room, hoping for rescue.